In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. A friend recently confided in me that I am by far the worst person to watch a movie with. (laughs) And I told him, it's not my fault. You see, the writing is so poor with some of the movies that come out, you can easily tell what's going to happen within the first five minutes. That's the killer. Those two are going to get together at the end. That's involved with magic. That's it. You don't have to watch the rest of the movie. (laughs) So needless to say, we don't watch movies anymore together. (laughs) But see, for the past week... Our parish here has been all about stories. It's been about the story that we have been following of Jesus Christ arriving in Jerusalem triumphant as king, spending the week there, having a dramatic and fierce encounter with the religious leaders and the political leaders of his day, and then being crucified and laid in a tomb. And if we were painting this as really any other story, we'd say, well, that's it. The story ends there, and let's just kind of all go home disappointed. But the problem is, is that on Easter morning, we celebrate that whatever story we're trying to tell with this ends up defying our expectations. Because no matter where we are, Jesus loves to defy and exceed our expectations. I speak a lot about story because my belief is is that each one of us in some way lives a story. We look around us and we try to say, I want to be like that person, or I want to be like that event in history, and it gives us a sense of meaning. The only problem is, is that the more and more that we look at the world, and we try to live the story that the world tells us, the more disappointed we become. It looks good at first, but in the end, it disappoints. And I made an analogy last night at the Easter Vigil, and I I still like to use it today, so bear with me. I think that in the end, when we begin to live our life according to the world, kind of like the Big Mac. Walk with me. Walk with me. Think about it. You see all the ads. You see the commercials for this wonderful sandwich. They even come up with a jingle. Two all beef patties. Special sauce. Lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun, right? But then you get to the restaurant. You order it. You open it up. That is not what was pictured. (laughs) You look at that and you wonder if the ad and that sandwich are even the same species. (laughs) And you realize life is not always the way it is advertised. And I think in this world, it's easy to fall into that false advertisement that says, we will be happy if we have this. Or we will be happy if we own this. Or have this relationship. Or if we have this many likes and views. And in the end, we realize that all it does is lead to sadness and despair. It's one of the reasons that the greatest killer for people 18 to 30 in our society is suicide. We have fallen into sadness and despair. But here's the good news. And I use that term figuratively and literally for today because it is the good news. The story that we see every day isn't the only story. The other story is what happened today. That Jesus defied all expectation, even of his own friends and family. In the gospel, the women go in the morning 
not because they're waiting to greet Jesus because he's rising from the dead. The women go because they want to anoint Jesus' body. They want to continue to mourn him. And what do they find? He's not there. And instead of believing immediately, they're afraid something must have happened. Somebody must have taken the body. Never in their wildest imaginations could they have believed that he'd risen from the dead, even though he told them that's exactly what he was going to do. And that's where we come in. We can choose to be a part of that story. By believing in Jesus' resurrection from the dead, we can choose to be with him in his death and his resurrection. We can choose to be in the story that he offers. But there's a risk. Because the moment that we participate in that story, we have to be ready for Jesus to defy all of our expectations. So if there's a situation that we're facing in our life that we're not sure how we're going to handle it, maybe there's a conflict in our family, maybe there's a job that's treating us, it's just killing us, maybe we're worried about our health, we need to be ready for Jesus to defy all of those expectations. And how do we know that he can? Because he's done it before. And so here's the challenge I'd like to make to all of us here. Whether you're visiting for the first time or if this is your 97th Easter with us. It's the same challenge. Don't take my word for it. Don't take these guys' words for it. Learn on your own the story of who this Jesus is. Learn the story of the lives that he's changed and transformed. Learn for yourself. That's one of the reasons that on May 8th, on Wednesday in the evening, when we do our Bible study, we're going to be studying the video and book series, The Case for Christ, which breaks down all of the questions that people have about whether or not Jesus was real, whether he thought he was God, whether he rose from the dead, all of it. Because the story is either true or false. And as St. Paul says, if the story is false, then we're the most pitiable and worthless people possible. But if the story is true, maybe, just maybe, if we become a part of it, then Jesus will defy every expectation that we have about what life can be about. And if you're curious about that, today is today to ask God to make you a part of that story.